Welcome to IPEMS, a podcast series that teaches about pediatric emergency medication safety and equips providers with strategies for solutions. I'm your host for the series, Dr. Tiffany Johnson of the Emergency Medical Services for Children National Resource Center. This podcast series is really focusing on how we can better train medical students, residents, as well as fellowship trainees. And joining us today, we have Dr. Angela Lumba. Dr. Lumba is a fellow at UCSD, and she's also the head site administrator for PEMFellows.com soon to be PEMnetwork.org and today she's going to be sharing with us a fellow's perspective on pediatric medication safety. Thank you so much for joining us today Dr. Lumba. Can you start off by telling us what are some of the challenges you face as a pediatric emergency medicine fellow when trying to safely deliver medication to children in the emergency setting? I think there are a lot of challenges delivering medication safety to children especially from a fellowship perspective. Um, as a role of a fellow, I've already completed my pediatric residency training or emergency medicine training, whatever it may be, and you find yourself in a situation in which you have a good amount of responsibility um, and a large amount of visibility in the ED. So you're not only taking on the role of a person administering the orders, but also a role of role model to the residents and medical students you're overseeing, to the nurses who are looking towards you as a supervising physician, and to your attendings who are counting on you. Um, some of the problems I've encountered uh, are in actually handwriting an order in, in hospitals where orders are still written in um, co-signing orders of the medical students and residents that I oversee, and in communicating with nursing how I want that order to be carried out. So there are many different aspects, not even mentioning pharmacy, where errors can happen. Educating fellows as well as other trainees about patient safety and quality improvement is a relatively new initiative and there aren't many um, best practices that exist currently. Um, from your perspective, can you tell us what are some of the aspects and qualities and components that should be included in a fellows curriculum on patient safety? I think that training fellows in quality improvement is a very important, important area of interest that's maybe coming to um, to focus recently in the last 10 years or so. In my residency program, we did have quality improvement projects, but I think in conceptualizing what exactly is quality improvement for a trainee is very different um, than conceptualizing that as an attending who's gonna be at the institution for a long period of time. As a trainee, as someone who may be in fellowship for the next three years, I want to see quality improvement projects that uh, are time-based, in which the fellows would be able to implement a project and then see the results within the next year or two um, to encourage an awareness that, that these obstacles can be um, overcome with, with concise projects. What role do you think fellows play in creating a culture of safety in an institution and within an emergency department? And how do you think this role can be fostered starting from day one in fellowship? Fellows play an important role in the safety culture uh, for the reasons that we are very visible. We have responsibility and um, we are seen often in, in the emergency department or, or whatever fellowship uh, you may be in. Because of that visibility, uh, you're connected to nursing, pharmacy, medical students, residents attending as, as a core communicator. And from that perspective, uh, you are in a dynamic position to affect change. From walking in with a medical student to a patient room and washing your hands, um, going through a great history and physical, uh, showing them how to write orders, write prescriptions, all of those things are, are important uh, learning points that you can implement. And Dr. Lumba, you're um, right now at the end of your first year fellowship. Can you just share with, with us that transition going from being a resident to being a fellow? And the fellow's role is a lot more complicated where you're balancing um, not only direct patient care, but overseeing the flow of the emergency department, focusing on your research projects, as well as supervising residents. And those are a lot of things to juggle. And how do you balance all of those things and make sure that you're doing it in a safe way where it's not impacting the quality of care? care for your patients. Yes, going from residency to fellowship can be daunting, overwhelming, intimidating, all of those words. Um, but in the end, it's important to remember that as a fellow, you're still a trainee. And even though things may be overwhelming, um, you need to take a second, take a breath, and realize that the focus and the main reason that you're in the hospital is for the patient. 
um, being effective or being efficient is not synonymous with speed. So if you take a little while longer to deliberate on your patient's condition and how you're going to um, effectively treat them, that's the important moment you need to take and that's something to remember as a fellow. Um, uh, efficiency will come as you practice and as your career moves forward. Do you have any last words of advice that you would like to offer the medical students, residents, and fellowship trainees who are listening to this podcast series? My words of advice are double check yourself. Um, confidence comes with repetition and, and finding your mistakes on your own and, and sharing that with those who work with you to learn from. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Lumba, and sharing with us your perspective as a pediatric emergency medicine fellow regarding uh, medication safety. And thank you to our audience for listening to this episode of IPEMS. To learn more about pediatric emergency medication safety, as well as strategies for improvement, please listen to other episodes in the IPEMS series.